Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and today we are looking at easily the most interesting graphics card launch of the year. Now, admittedly, the standard has not been high at all, so that really isn't saying much on its own, but I think even a few years ago, this collaboration would have got a lot of interest. I am, of course, talking about this graphics card here, the Asus RTX 3070 Noctua Edition. After plenty of leaks and rumours suggesting it might happen, they actually went and did it. Before I get into the nitty gritty of this card though, one thing I do want to say about this video is, it's not a typical graphics card review, so I'm not going to give you buying advice at the end like I usually would. The simple reason for that is, A, I have absolutely no idea how many of these cards there are actually going to be, and the ones that are made are probably going to be over a grand, so it's just, mm, I'm not even really thinking about the money aspect. For me, it's really just a technical curiosity. I want to know how good a Noctua GPU cooler is going to be, so that's what we're going to find out today. The first thing we need to cover then is the design. For years, the brown and beige colour scheme has been an absolute signature of any Noctua product, and things are no different here. So we can see a dark brown plastic shroud. The metal backplate as well is also a very dark brown colour, but what really grabs the attention are those two fans with the classic brown and beige colour scheme. These are actually 120mm Noctua NFA12 by 25. Of course, you don't need me to tell you that the design of this card is definitely going to split opinion. I've already seen that online on Reddit and Twitter and various other places. If you like the classic Noctua colour scheme though, then you will absolutely love this card and I really think that's who it's for. Personally, I would have preferred a Chromax version, so maybe that's something Asus and Noctua can work on down the line. But if you love Noctua, then this card really is for you. We can't go any further though without addressing the sheer size of this graphics card. It's absolutely huge for an RTX 3070, measuring in at 310 by 147 by 87.5mm, so that means it's 4.3 slots thick, which is absolutely monstrous. As a comparison, I have stuck it here next to the RTX 3070 Founders Edition, and it absolutely dwarfs it. It's also not light at over 1.5 kilograms, compared to just over 1 kilogram for the Founders Edition, which for me does make it somewhat confusing that no support bracket comes included in the box. Personally, I think a matching brown and beige support bracket would have been awesome just to complement the existing colour scheme, but you're on your own. In fairness, I did actually expect more GPU sag than what we can see here, but there is still a little bit, especially when we compare it to the 3070 Founders Edition, so for me it is just missing some sort of support bracket. Moving on though, we have already mentioned the full length metal backplate, with a few cutouts dotted around the place just behind some capacitors on the back of the PCB. There are also a few beige stripes towards the end of the backplate just to give it a bit more Noctua flair, as well as the Asus and Noctua logos. As the Asus RTX 3070 Noctua Edition is using the same PCB as the Asus 3070 Tough Gaming, we do also get a choice of BIOS, so there's a Performance and a Quiet BIOS, both of which we will test shortly. As well as that, we can note two 8-pin power connectors, and then for our display outputs, we get two HDMI 2.1 and three DisplayPort 1.4. Taking a closer look at the cooling setup then, here we've removed the fan shroud which is held in place with two screws at either end of the card. This shows us Noctua is indeed using standard 120mm fans, which are NFA12 by 25s in this case, and actually you could even swap out these fans if you wanted to. The PWM fan headers connect to a small hub in the shroud, and that then uses a proprietary connection to the GPU PCB itself. With the shroud removed, we can also get a better idea as to why exactly this card is so thick. It may sound obvious, but a lot of the thickness is actually down to those 120mm fans. Yes, the heatsink is larger than normal, and we will see that in more detail shortly, but with most GPUs, the fans are really only as thick as the fan blades themselves. But here, with the NFA12, you've also got to incorporate that 25mm thick frame. 
Talking of the heatsink as well then, at first glance, I really wasn't sure what I had changed here compared to the Tough 3070. Asus says this Noctua Edition heatsink has been specially designed, but looking at the images online, I really couldn't tell the difference. As it turns out, when Asus refers to a tailor-made heatsink for this card, it basically means they've upsized the existing heatsink from the Tough 3070, as you can see here. It's still got five heat pipes, but it's just bigger in every dimension. Lastly, as we have mentioned, underneath that heatsink is the same PCB as the Tough 3070. The only reason I've not removed it here to show you all the different components is actually because James is going to be doing a Noctua theme build in the near future, so I just didn't want to affect any of the stock thermal performance by changing out the thermal paste or anything like that, so stay tuned for that build. That is it for our look at the design of the card though, so let's move on to what we are all here for, the performance. As always, we're using our regular GPU test system provided to us by PC Specialist, and this is built around an i9-10900K overclocked to 5.1GHz on all cores. That is paired with the Asus RG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard, and we also have 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory clocked at 3600MHz. For all of our testing today as well, we're comparing this Noctua 3070 to both NVIDIA's RTX 3070 Founders Edition and Gigabyte's RTX 3070 Gaming OC to give you a couple of comparison points to show us exactly how much difference this specially designed cooler actually makes. Kicking off with the thermals then, as mentioned earlier, we have tested both the performance and the quiet BIOS on this card, but honestly, there's not much difference between them. Both delivered peak temperatures under 60 degrees, with the hotspot running 10 to 12 degrees warmer. As we'd hope though, that means the Asus Noctua 3070 absolutely wipes the floor with the other two 3070s we have tested, with the Asus Performance BIOS delivering a peak GPU temperature that is 13 degrees lower than Nvidia's Founders Edition, so it's definitely off to a good start. The real victory, however, is that this Noctua Edition GPU is not only significantly cooler, but it is also quieter too. For the performance BIOS, the fan spun at 950 RPM, and that dropped to 850 RPM for the quiet mode. As you can see, I've actually got both readings measured at 32 decibels on this chart, but honestly, we are actually running into the noise floor of my office. Now, I live in London and environmental noise is fairly high, so even with my PC off, I'm not really seeing below 32 decibels on the sound meter. In an anechoic chamber, however, I would expect to see actual GPU noise readings significantly lower for the Noctua, but for me, this is as close to a silent graphics card as it is ever going to get. To try and illustrate the actual differences in noise levels between all three cards, I did run a quick sound test where each card is running at full load. Rounding off the thermal testing then, here we have noise normalized the fan speeds to 40 decibels, which actually required a fan speed of 92% or 1770 RPM for the Noctua 3070. Unsurprisingly, almost doubling the fan speed for this card dropped GPU temperatures significantly down to 47 degrees with a hotspot of 59C, which is almost 20 degrees cooler than the Founders Edition when noise normalized. What makes that even more impressive is that the power limit has actually been raised by 20 watts over the founders, up to 240 watts. Now that's obviously not a massive change, but over the five games we tested, using Nvidia PCAT we saw an average power draw of 242.2 watts for the Asus Noctua card. 
That being said, the Gigabyte Gaming OC is even more power hungry, drawing another 20 watts more. Up next then is game testing, and to be honest, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, simply because a 3070 is only going to be 2-3% slower or faster than any other 3070, and to be honest, that is exactly what we found with our testing today. The Gigabyte Gaming OC has the highest power limit, so it did run slightly faster out of the box, but we're talking differences of just 2-3 FPS, so really nothing major at all. In a nutshell, the Asus Noctua 3070 is as fast as you'd expect a 3070 to be, though it did typically edge out the Founders Edition by a frame or two itself. Of course, we did also manually overclock the card, managing an extra 130MHz to the GPU core and 1200MHz to the memory. This saw our frame rates increase by 7-8% in the games we retested, which is really what we'd expect from an Ampere GPU, and it isn't anything crazy, but I guess it's better than nothing. Power draw did also bump up as well, to a new average of 272.8 watts, which is about a 30 watt increase over stock. There we have it then, that is pretty much it for our look at the Asus RTX 3070 Noctua Edition. I have to say, it has done pretty much exactly what I thought it would, when I first saw those two NFA12 fans and the sheer size of this card. And by that I mean it runs incredibly cool and incredibly quiet. From that perspective, we can only say it is job very, very well done for this Noctua cooler. Of course, the brown and beige colour scheme is going to turn a lot of people off, and I'd imagine there's plenty of people watching this video who think that's probably the most ugly graphics card ever made. That being said, Noctua has proven very popular over the years, so equally, I'd bet there's a lot of people watching who's already got brown and beige fans or air coolers in their system, and now there's the possibility of getting a graphics card to match. While it's not for me personally, like I said, I would prefer a Chromax version, in a normal time when GPUs were actually in stock and in stock at MSRP, I reckon this card would actually sell really well. The only thing I'm left scratching my head about then is exactly why Asus chose to use a 3070 for this Noctua edition. Considering the noise levels and the really impressive thermal performance, I'd say this cooler could easily handle a 3080 or even a 3090, so it does just leave me scratching my head a bit. Maybe they just wanted to test the waters and see what the reception would be like to this Noctua collaboration, mm, I'm really not too sure, but if you guys have any ideas, do let me know down in the comments. With that, I'm going to sign out from this video. I've been Dominic for Kit Guru. If you liked it, as always, please do toss me a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. While you're there, please do hit subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell. And why not come tell me what you think over on our Discord server, which is linked in the description. While you're there, you can also check out our merch and even consider backing us on Patreon, where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic Forkit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.